What made you go, screw this, I quit? I used to work for Toys R Us, and in summer, it was pretty common for people to purchase those big wooden fort swing sets for their kids. You know, the ones that go in your backyard. The problem was that the box was so big that even a massive truck couldn't fit it. You would literally need to rent a U-Haul to get this thing home, so it was pretty customary for us to open the box and pull the contents out, and the driver might make two to three trips back and forth from their house until eventually they'd get it all home. But one of our employees had the bright idea to leave the box perfectly in line with the rest of the boxes. Now, you have to understand that these boxes were about three feet wide and seven to eight feet tall. You could walk inside them with zero issues. So instead of disposing of the box, which was a task in its own right, the employee closed the box back up and left it there, only to later return with tons of books from the kids' section, those small foam chairs that kids sit in while watching TV, and some of the candy from the birthday section. And this employee would sit in here for huge portions of a shift, eating candy, reading children's books, and sleeping. This probably went on for a few weeks. Finally, one day, the manager called him into her office. She was livid. She was screaming that he was never around, that he was going home during his shift and returning later, and that she was going to fire him unless he could prove he was on site. Well, like a smug jerk who knew his goose was cooked but could technically prove he was there, he decided to go out in a blaze of glory and took her and the rest of the managers to his little hideaway which he had now dubbed a Fort Keith. His name was Scott, so I never understood that. Since I was lucky enough to be there for what happened next, I can tell you with perfect memory the events that followed. So Scott opened the door to Fort Keith, and the inside looked like a hobo shelter with a significant amount of merchandise and food wrappers. The manager's face turned red, and right as she was about to step inside, Scott put up his hand to stop her. In the best non-verbal screw this, I quit moment in history, he pointed to the sign he had written in crayon that read no girls allowed. I think I nearly wet my pants laughing. He was immediately terminated and on his way out, he had the biggest grin I've ever seen. It was truly one of the best moments I've experienced in retail history. Oh man, so good. I mean like he definitely isn't employee of the month material. And I'd hate to be his own manager, but dude, that is the way to go out if you know you're going out anyway. I can see that scene in my head too where he stops his manager, waves his hand and finger in like a no-no gesture, and then points to his little handwritten sign and crayon of all things that no girls are allowed in Fort Keith. Like seriously though, why did he call it Fort Keith? Anyway, good one, Scott. He set up the bar quite high for these stories now, so let's see how the others compare, yeah? This is a second story. Story 2. I started my first job at 15 as a dishwasher for a friend's family's new Korean restaurant. They were my neighbors. My typical workday was 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the clock. Afterwards, I was expected to stay and help close the shop. Instead of getting paid for those extra three hours, I was given a meal as compensation. To be fair, there are laws prohibiting minors from working too long or too late, and honestly, I didn't mind it as the food was incredible. After about a year, I was in high school, and due to the minimal wait staff, I was expected to work as a waiter or busboy in between dishes. Fair enough, I was getting sick of the same old, same old anyway. So I came in during the week to start training, and since they knew I was already familiar with the menu and whatnot, I wasn't a shadow, I was just on my own and winging it. I made a mistake, for example, not remembering soup or salad, so I went back upstairs to ask. When I returned with my answer, I was insulted by my manager for not taking this seriously enough. All right. A couple of months went by and I was waiting tables and dishwashing all while being micromanaged by my manager. Well, one weekend a Mardi Gras parade was being held downtown where the restaurant is located so it'd easily be one of our busiest days that year. I was scheduled for 4pm to 10pm but they asked if I could come in that morning around 8 or so. About an hour or two into my new shift there was a mountain of dishes I was being expected to maintain while also waiting tables. My manager walked into the back where I was and the dialogue went something like this. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, washing dishes? Go ask table six if they need refills. Yes, ma'am. I walked out the back into the front of the store while she's tailgating me and picked up the pitcher of water. As I picked it up, she asked, do you even know what you're doing? At this point, I'm pretty fed up and kindly responded with, yeah, I know how to pour water. She didn't like that and told me that I needed to look at her with respect and that if I didn't like it here, I should just leave. So I left them with mountains of dishes and thirsty customers. Know your worth. Story 3. 
I worked in a particular role for a small charity. It was already a busy role, but then due to changes with the company, my role became ridiculous. I was a senior manager looking after the budgets and accounts and acting as an accountant, so suddenly I had to teach myself all about charity tax law, which isn't easy. I was managing marketing, media communications, strategic implementation, reception, all customer service, a physical and online shop, 10 members of staff, legal compliance, including insurance and data protection, health and safety, HR reporting and end-of-year audits, preparing papers for and attending trustee meetings, procurement, as well as general meetings. My job had gone way beyond my original job description, obviously. Despite all the extra responsibilities, my boss still expected me to have time to do everything to an extremely high standard. He couldn't possibly understand that there would be any reason for me to be overwhelmed, apart from me being inadequate. It was strange how everyone in that place also complained about being overworked. At one point, the staff were going to go to the trustee board to see if they could get him replaced. It was always everyone else's fault. He sat me down at my 12-month probation meeting and said that I wasn't doing well enough to be given the job permanently. He wanted to extend my probation by another three months, during which time he must see improvements. He asked me what I thought I needed to improve. I said that I had been telling him for months what I needed to improve, which was for him to take the fact that everyone was overworked seriously and his expectations of what a human being could achieve were ridiculous at best. Apparently, that was never going to happen, so I quit. He said he didn't want that. I said I did, and I just quit. It had been on my mind for a while, but that pushed me over the edge. A part of me wanted to stay, to go to the probation hearing, and let everyone in HR know exactly what he was like. But I was just so done with the whole thing. And it was the best decision ever. I now have an amazing job I love for a different charity that actually values what I do, and it feels great. Story 4 I interviewed for a corporate accounting role because public accounting paid much less and required a lot more hours. During the interview, I was told to show up between 8 and 9 and leave between 4 and 5. They assured me there would be no more late nights or working weekends, which sounded great. I took the job, but within two months, I realized they had lied. First, there was absolutely no training on their processes. I was given enough work for three people with no direction on how to do it. My manager was so scatterbrained that he could never help me when I asked, and nobody talked for eight hours a day, and the work culture was unbelievably bad. I usually arrive at work at 8.30 and leave at 4.30, eating lunch at my desk. One day, I was told, since you're leaving so early, I can only hope you're working from home. Then, the next week, we were told we had to come in for a full day on Saturday because we had New Year's Day off that Monday. My final straw was when I left at 2.30 one day for a doctor's appointment. When I returned the next day, my manager pulled me into a room and said that I didn't have enough accrued PTO to do that, and he was going to dock my pay in a salaried position. The next day, I went in and told him it wasn't working out and put in my two weeks' notice. On my last day, he told me I could leave at 11.30, so I did. When I received my final paycheck, he had docked my pay for the remainder of that day. Luckily, the recruiter who got me the job followed up to ask what happened, and I was completely open and honest with her. Apparently, that manager had a very high turnover rate for the position I was in, and the recruiter told me that the CFO was looking into replacing him. What the... Okay, so that manager was one sneaky snake pulling stunts like that off, like saying one thing all nice and helpful-like on the dude's last day, then doing the complete opposite and basically stealing people's hard-earned money. I guess bright side is, I'm pretty sure he's not there anymore either. Story 5 I was volunteering in a local charity shop last weekend. As it turned out, most of the unpaid volunteers were conscripted from job seekers or community service. They had to turn up to receive their welfare payments, etc. Anyway, I'd been there for about six months, and it was hard graft at times, moving sofas around the shop, up and down, three floors. It was a nice sunny day, and I was taking my lunch break out the back, sitting on a sofa at the loading bay doors in view of a public car park, eating a sandwich with my feet up on the railing. All of a sudden, some woman who I'd never seen before started wagging her finger at me like I was a naughty kid, then shouting at me in a disgusting tone, Get up, young man, how dare you? She kept ranting on. I was like, Who the hell is this? She can get screwed. Slowly, I got up and moved inside. It turns out she was the area manager. She annoyed me so bad. I didn't really have an issue with what she was asking. I possibly didn't give a good impression but it was the way she was speaking to me that I had a problem with. I think she thought I was the typical conscript who could be treated badly without recourse, as they had to stay there and take it in order to get their payments. Some customers in the shop heard how she spoke to me, and they backed me up, so I knew I wasn't nuts. 
I told her she could hold my volunteering and I got the hell out of there. I never went back. It made me think, why should I give up my free time to help this witch on a fat salary hit her targets? I doubt she had a charitable bone in her body. I wrote a two-page letter of complaint to the head office but never sent it. I kind of regret that. Story 6. I was 20 and had been working in a call center for just over a year. I was promoted to assistant manager with a new compensation structure that was identical to that of the other assistant manager. Basically, you you got your wage, a very small percentage of the total office revenue, and then 10% of your own revenue from when you worked on the phone. My immediate manager and office supervisor gave me this without confirming it with the regional manager, who was on a two-month vacation in the DR. When I got my first check after being promoted, there was no bonus. I was told it would be corrected soon. When I got my second check after being promoted, there was no bonus. I was told it would be corrected soon. When I got my third check after being promoted, there was no bonus and I was told we had to wait for the regional manager to come back and authorize it. I was being paid weekly and worked another four weeks under the premise that I would get a lump sum when the regional manager returned. The problem was that I sold significantly more than the other office manager. The back pay had grown to such a large amount that when the regional manager did return, he questioned why the office manager had given me this structure, as he considered it to be too much money. On my next check, there was no lump sum and I was told that they were figuring out a new structure. My following shift, I stayed home and got a frantic call from the office manager asking me why I wasn't at work. I told him I couldn't afford to go to work. He said, why can't you afford it? I said, because I've been getting ripped off for two months. Call me back when you have my money or don't call me at all. Story 7. I used to work at Dollar General. I was about five months pregnant at the time and had a lot of pain. I normally worked freight because even though I was pregnant, I was still the most efficient at it. At some point, my manager had gotten into a serious car accident and couldn't return to work for a few months. This basically promoted our assistant manager to manager. Dollar General does inventory once a year for each store and it's pretty much hell. The only good part about it is that you don't get a truck that week so there's no freight to put up. The bad part about it is that you get a huge truck the next week. So we got through inventory and the next week we got the huge truck as expected. I ended up having a scheduling conflict due to an appointment and wasn't able to come in during the day on a Thursday to put up freight but could come in that night or another day. Instead of the assistant manager letting me do that, she just took me off the schedule completely and didn't replace me with anyone. All while we had the biggest truck of the year. It was pretty obvious she was doing it to be petty, so I called the manager, bawling my eyes out because it wasn't the first time something like this had happened. You know who got yelled at? I did. I was five months pregnant and putting up freight, even though I was in a lot of pain doing it. I was the hardest worker there, and the assistant manager was just being petty, so I was fed up, clocked out for lunch that same day, and never went back. Man, this story brings back some serious frustration from my own life, like I totally get the screw this, I quit move. But while we're here and it seems like you're enjoying the content, please remember to like and subscribe and let's keep this channel going, why don't we? Story 8. I had my annual review after finishing my first year at a retail store and I got a 13 cent per hour raise. A co-worker of mine who broke into the laundromat grocery store in town to steal a beer a few weeks prior got a 14 cent per hour raise. Moreover, new employees were making 12 cents more to start than I was in year one. Screw this, I quit and screw you, Under Armour. So this was back in 2012, 2013, so yeah, a while back. My store manager went to a national meeting and ended up getting another store manager knocked up, but he left shortly after I did. Some other stuff went down with reports by the employees against longtime managers and new managers, so some regional or HQ executives came in and fired all the managers, and they started from scratch. It was very poorly run over the entire course of my employment there, considering the manager who hired me allegedly got fired for a serious crime, or he quit just before that. When I left, I took a job from the UA assistant manager's wife selling shoes at Dillard's. The assistant manager worked for a few months at UA before quitting around the time I did for a lot of similar BS reasons. At Dillard's, I made $11 per hour before commission, drove like 10 minutes to work instead of like 30 and had a way more enjoyable experience but still ended up leaving after six months. Now I work in my field of study while I finish my master's, so done with retail forever, I hope. Yeah, retail is a tough bag of heavy balls to carry around for just a few bucks an hour, commission or not. Sounds like OP found some semblance of contentment and happiness doing good work in something he thinks he's good at. 
Now let's see if the rest of the stories have happier endings too. Story 9. I worked a minimum wage job at a Philly cheesesteak restaurant in a strip mall while I was trying to stack cash before a vacation. I cooked for two days while my boss screamed at me for taking too long, using too much meat, and not handling the heat of the steam well. He apparently felt no pain, so naturally I should have also that level of pain tolerance. I endured this until the third day. He handed me a shovel when I clocked in and told me to clean up the dumpster, but it was crawling with critters. I walked back in and handed him the shovel, telling him I wasn't going to do that. He flipped and yelled a lot, but that was a hard pass for me. I apologized to the other crew working that day, and I bounced. I've since wondered how much money it would take before I would have dug in and handled that mess. Maybe $500 in cash under the table? Probably 1000 before I would do it happily. $5.15 per hour and 1998 dollars were not going to get it done, though. I did the math. About $5 in 1998 after inflation is about $9.50 in 2024 money. So yeah, ain't no way in heck am I going to shovel up trash and cockroaches at that wage. I mean, come on, would you? An alternative question might be, well, how many free Philly cheesesteaks would you do it for? Story 10. When I was a student working as a Pizza Hut delivery driver in Virginia, there was this dumb policy where they picked one driver a night to do all the dishes. We were told to do them in between deliveries, but that was impossible when we were constantly getting orders. Others were supposed to help out throughout the night, but of course nobody did. I was left with about three hours of washing dishes at around 1 a.m. I had two finals the next day and was going through really bad family problems at the time too. I got so frustrated that I just walked out, drove home, and had an absolute mental breakdown due to all the stress that had been piling up. I didn't say a word to anybody and never went back. To this day, I feel absolutely awful that I left the manager with all that work to do, though she was kind of a witch anyway. Still, I feel ashamed that I just walked away from hard work rather than dealing with it. Story 11. I worked for a company for over a year that was contracted to make deliveries for Amazon. The vans they equipped us with were terribly maintained and fully unequipped to handle winter weather. I worked with the company through their first winter, which meant sliding all over the road when it was icy and getting stuck constantly every time we had snow. I never had a major accident, though I did have two or three close calls where only minor damage was incurred to the van. I decided to stick it through the summer when the weather was obviously much better. All summer long, they promised us that new and better vans were coming. September rolled around, no vans. October, no vans. November, no vans. That month, we got our first real snow. I got back from my route and immediately put in my notice. My boss told me they would be getting new vans by the end of the year. I told her that was nice, and she walked. Story 12. I was at a job for three years, consistently in the top three of my department in terms of performance. I asked my supervisor repeatedly if I could be recommended for advancement or promotion and he always told me he was trying his best to get me new opportunities. I found out from a friend in a different department that I had been considered a top candidate for four different promotions, and each time, my supervisor had blocked it. He told me it was true, and he did it because I could never find someone who does what you do without paying them a lot more. Internally, I said, screw this. I quit and found a new job within three months. I took all my PTO, and on the day I came back, I quit two hours into the day, leaving him high and dry at a peak time. Story 13. I worked at a big box office store. In my first week, I got held up by a train and was five minutes late. By the time I had gotten there, the manager had blown up my phone, 15 calls. But since it was winter and I had a big wool coat on, plus a sweatshirt, I didn't feel my phone go off. I got a lecture when I walked in and all morning he kept looking at me like I had done something horrible. About two hours later, I got called into the office for a write-up. I went in and was very calm about the whole thing. He kept saying I should show more remorse. I told him if five minutes was enough to get me a write-up and a lecture, plus being told I obviously don't care since I'm not remorseful enough, he could keep the job. Story 14. I was in the same position for two years and was actively looking at other positions within the same company. My bosses knew about it. It was just time for a change and to advance my career. A great opportunity came up and I was offered the position. However, my current leadership blocked me because I had received a promotion six months prior. That promotion was literally an automatic email that said, Congratulations, you're now level 2 instead of level 1 because you have met your sales attainment and completed all your yearly training. Literally, an automated email stopped me from getting promoted and bosses said I had to wait another 18 months. I left that company and went to a competitor doing the same thing for better pay and significantly more support. Alright, so the reasons behind throwing in the towel vary pretty wildly, eh? 
We all know these guys' stories, but what happened to those who quit on the spot? Check out the next video, People Who Have Quit on the Spot, What Happened? And understand the spontaneity. Story 1 is pretty valid. Let me know if you agree. I'll see you there, and thank you for watching this one.